my name is Dave Pollock, I'm an archaeologist and I did some work at Dungarvan Castle, County Waterford, ahead of um, not exactly renovation but conservation works by the OPW. Now the work I did was about 20 years ago over a few short seasons in the summer but we found out a few interesting things about the castle. Now to start off, to put it in context, I've got a reconstruction here of the town and castle of Dungarvan at the end of the Middle Ages. Now this is in about the 16th, sometime in the 1600s, probably about 1630, somewhere around there. We've got the town walled in, nice wall all the way around it. The church is actually outside the town, the parish church, and the castle is at the other end, right on the edge of the sea, and it's protecting a ferry crossing out of the town for the main road going up to Waterford. So this is Dungarvan, a small town in the 17th century, and that's the castle over there. Now, if we look a bit closer at the castle, here we go. This is the castle, not exactly how they built it, but the castle as it would have been in about 1300 AD, the sort of the heyday of the medieval period, if you like. There are four, three parts to the castle, one is over here, that's the main bit, known as the caput. It's the shell keep, it's where the important people lived, where the important business was done. It's like a tower, but it's actually got a hollow centre. It's too wide to roof as a single roof building. So it's actually a collection of buildings um, around inside a shell. And it's probably very similar to the kind of thing you would have got on an earthen timber castle of 1200, that sort of a date, where you've got a nice wooden wall around the top with a few buildings in it on top of a mound. In this case, the mound is a natural mound of rock and clay that was sitting there by the seaside, and they merely covered the mound in stone, giving it a stone wall instead of a wooden top to it, and they've cut a ditch round to take that stone wall right down to between the tides, maybe down to low tide level, something like that. So you end up with quite a considerable lump as the main part of the castle. And in addition, you've got a tower over on this corner and a gatehouse here. And those are the three pieces of the castle, apart from the yard in there. And that's it. Um, essentially, the shell key a tower, a gatehouse, which had living accommodation in it, a few buildings clustered around the yard, that's the whole thing, and not a very big yard either, because you've got this big ditch taking out quite a lump of it. Now, if we look at the place as they actually built it, about a hundred years before, well, in fact, that's coming up on the next one, because I forgot I put this picture in here first, but what we're looking at here, can, can we go back to the last one, just very briefly, it's this tower I just want to look at. This tower is not original. In fact, that's not original either. The only real original bits of the castle is this piece here, the shell keep and the wall going around it. This tower here, we know it's not original because, next picture, because this is the tower here, that's the shell keep there, and this is the wall that crosses between them. Um, now, this tower, was built to have no wall going across uh, between the two here because we've got an, an arrow loop, a, an important firing position which looks smack into the back of that wall. So this wall is a bit later. This tower was built to be on the outside edge of the ditch, that ditch that came round the original castle. And if we could have gone out, if it wasn't quite so grey today, I could have shown you the join in the wall here where the new stonework came on, where they built the tower and attached it to the end of the yard wall at the time. So this is an extra, this tower here, and so is that gatehouse. If we go on to the next to Picatieu, here we see the place as they built it. Now, I could have said as they finished it, but they hadn't finished it at all. It appears that they ran out of money. Um, this is our shell keep over here. There's no fancy buildings here. It is just a yard wall, a walled yard, with a few buildings on the inside of it. We don't know much about them at all. But this, we know a fair bit about it. This building here, um, it's got buildings inside it, as, as you'd expect. 
but in fact the top of that building is woodwork uh, it's got a wooden top on the thing they never finished they ran out of money and we know that they were running out of money that things were going wrong on them because the wall on this side is built extremely thin it's only that thick instead of that thick which it should have been and when they did get funds again they thickened the wall and when they did finish it off it was the proper thickness the top of it but the top of it to start off with for quite a while was just that thick well that was our castle now, if we look at the place later on, one other thing I want to say about the castle. This is the castle in the uh, 1640s. It's basically the same time. It's just a little later than that general reconstruction of the town that I was showing you. Um, here we've got our shell keep, a little knocked about. It's been through the wars, literally. Uh, here's our round tower. The roof has gone in that. Here's the gatehouse, and it's got a little artillery. Uh, position on top, somewhere to stick a gun. Uh, the ditch is completely filled in around the shell keep there and around the time of this in 1642 which is probably later just after uh, I based this drawing, so this drawing is about 1640, within a couple of years the place was under siege again, it wasn't the first time and we have a great account of that siege and we know that they blew a big hole in the wall and they were going to climb in but they found a big bank of clay on the inside so they came to terms i think with the people on the inside of the castle anyway which wall did they break i think i know it wasn't that one because it's all there the entire wall is there right to the top and if we could have gone outside i could have pointed out the crenellations on the top the up and down bits they're still there right from when they finished that castle, from the 1300s castle. They're still there all the way along the top. Um, they didn't go in through that wall. Again, that's there. The, the crunchy bit is still on the top. They didn't go in through that wall because the account says nothing about an amphibious attack. They didn't go across in boats, so they couldn't have got at that wall, which only leaves this one here. And when we look closely at that wall, you can actually see a lump of it that's been rebuilt in there. So, I believe we know how they got into the place in the 1642 siege. Um, they had the guns on the other side of the river, out by Abbey side, pounded it from there, and presumably had people on the right side of the river ready to storm in. And that's a couple of interesting facts about 